All right, well, let's move on to the gameplay here and see how things go between these two players. Seth Manfield, a, uh, geez, what hasn't he done, really? Pro Tour champion, Hall of Fame member, Javier Dominguez, a world champion. Both uh, world champions, yeah, I believe. Uh, indeed, both of them world champions, of course. As, as I say, what hasn't Seth Manfield done? But uh, Javier Dominguez, I guess, has got a slightly rarer honor in that his face is on a magic card. Yeah, Javier really the first world champion in the modern era that mm. got a invitational card. I think Paulo, uh, the next world champion after him, is also receiving a card. We just haven't seen it reach mm. print yet since that Worlds was last year. And it, that's kind of the speed at which the print cycle works. Yes, yes, indeed. And of course, when we say invitational card, we're talking about the old cards. We're talking about Dark Confidence, Shadow Mage Infiltrator, the classics that, that featured winners of the Invitational, uh, a tournament series that was retired. And, you know, it's difficult to get your face on a Magic card. Either you, you know, win a World Championship these days, win an Invitational years ago, or be the mum of an artist in the case of Admiral Beckett Brass. So, uh, I mean, you know, you can sort of pick your path uh, for how you want to get on there. But uh, in any case, Javier Dominguez has certainly achieved that. And uh, right now is getting underway with the little one-two curve out, the Heart's Desire into Shepherd of the Flock. Nothing as of yet from Seth Manfield as he begins his next turn. Yeah, Seth did have the turn to Wolf Willow Haywin, which is now giving him the opportunity to play Binding of the Old Gods, Binding the Old Gods this turn if he so mm -hmm. chooses. Keep Javier's pressure in check, get that extra ramp, and set up for potentially a early... Uh, Tybalt off the Valky side, uh, maybe a uh, Seagate Restoration, should he have the time for it. Doesn't often find that time in this sort of more mid-range aggressive matchup from Javier. Uh, Javier, this is his uh, bread and butter. He won Worlds with essentially a red aggressive deck. He won a Pro Tour with Gruel Aggro. Uh, this is the comfort zone for him, this type of archetype. Yeah, yeah. But it's not unusual to see Seth's deck without any creatures on the battlefield. In fact, I'd say it's typical given the fact that it doesn't play very many creatures at all here. Valky can be run out as a two drop, but often often isn't. Uh, usually it will. Well, never mind. Okay, I'll forget it. Sorry, Seth. Just, sorry, mate. Sorry, trying to, <laughs> trying to commentate a game while you're making a fool of me. I'm but, sorry, uh, Mr. Manfield. I was wrong. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have said that. Spoke the Valky here snagging a, a Bone Crusher Giant out of the hand isn't too bad, actually. Uh, we'll keep the pressure down a little bit. But I think it, at this stage here, it is Manfield who needs business, right? Like, he needs to find something. The Seagat Restoration is uncastable in for the foreseeable, for the foreseeable future. Not Can't be cast next turn, at least. Um, that would be the turn for that. So I think he needs to find something this turn. He does need to find something. I, I think you see Seth's decisions on that turn sort of suggesting he's trying to find something he could have gone for a Ketria Triumph to try to set up for uh, Tybalt the next turn have his red source but instead goes for a Zagoth Triumph trying to have the second black source he needs to set himself up for a potential top deck Shadows Verdict uh, landing Tybalt there there puts him in a position where one he can get one of these creatures like Bone Crusher Giant out of Javier's hand and two it essentially turns off the attack from that 1-1 one, one from Javier, so saves himself a bit of life as well as he tries to get into a position where he can try to stabilize this board. He's quite behind, right? Oh my god, never mind. Yes, Emergent Ultimate is going to really change things here. The secret uh, third chapter of... Um, Find the Old Gods. Find the Old Gods prox here, but that's not the thing we're looking at right now. We're looking at an Emergent Ultimatum, and this could be game over. Like, this card wins games on the spot. Now, can't get Valky. Guarantee... I guarantee you Seth will get here an Alrun's Epiphany. But what it's accompanied with, that remains to be seen. We could see Vorinclex. We could see Curabest the Sea God. Uh, plenty of options in the deck here for this Emergent Ultimatum. But Alrun's Epiphany, almost certainly locked in here. Yeah, I think that's the Sea God of Vorinclex, Alrun's Epiphany yeah. is just it, the clear choice here. Uh, and now we're going to see the insane power of Curabest the Sea God plus Voron Clex going to get both counters on that saga now. Immediately get an eight eight and tap your opponent's board. Attack for eight and Javier has nothing in hand and unleash Fury that's dead in two lands and this game could just be over if Javier doesn't draw a castable creature here. 
Really important note if you're going to pick up this deck and play with it. Really, really important note. You must make sure the Boronclex resolves before the Tybalt or the Kiora, which means that on the Salta Ultimate, on the Emergent Ultimatum uh, yeah, it's over. screen, when you pick which one you want, you always click on the Boronclex last. So it'll resolve first. That's exactly what Seth Manfield does. And as we say, it wins the game then and there. And that is the power of this control deck. It has not quite a combo finish because it's just one card, but uh, once, if the board is stable, if it's not under too much pressure, and if it's able to fire off an ultimatum uncontested, it'll basically win the game with just one. One card. Yeah, and things are not getting easier for Javier post-board. Game one, Cess deck is a bit clunkier trying to make sure that it has game against everything. Game two, there's no clunkiness. Goodbye Beholds, goodbye Mystical Dispute, goodbye Negate. This matchup isn't aggressive enough for the Chariots. We're bringing mm -hmm. in all the removal. We're bringing in the large boys and Pelucranos and Elder Gargaroth. It, things are getting harder for Javier, who just doesn't even have that many cards for the matchup available here. Which is surprising, really, given the uh, the preponderance of Sultan in former weeks. But look, you can never count Naya Adventures out or Naya Fury out. This deck can win out. Of, we talk about explosive finishes with Emergent Ultimatum. I tell you what, old mate Goldspan Dragon, they can crack some skulls as well. Don't worry about it. With uh, cards like the Unleash Fury and the Into the Kazul's Fury, Sajiri Step to a Sajiri, Sajiri Shelter to get it through. This is uh, really, really powerful stuff that we see win games out of nowhere and so seth especially with this stinker of an opener is going to uh gonna of course have to be circumspect about that be aware of the fact that javier does have the potential to win out of nowhere yeah it, seth is considering this keep on the draw which is fair enough he does have a green source he has the seagate restoration so two lands with the haven that's three lands so he could have cobbled something together but hey i i think the mulligan is a safer choice and also a call back to a recent seth manfield tweet uh saying that perhaps i should be mulliganing more Seth never mulligan Manfield sends him back here, and he's got a much better six. This six looks fantastic, actually. Yeah, I, I think once Seth starts mulliganing uh, like 10% more, uh, yeah. he may just be unstoppable. We may just be coming back to the era of but, Manfield. But the other thing is, you know that if Seth mulligans, you know it's a bad hand. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's a bad hand. Like, if it's a 50-50 for the rest of us, Seth's, and Seth's just like, nah, i got to get rid of it. It's like, okay, well, that was correct. That's fine. Yeah. We, All right. We've been stating Gold's Fan Dragon over the weekend, how important it is this card has haste, how important it is that people need instant speed answers to it. And Seth's deck notably doesn't have that many. There's really only four copies of Heartless Act here, uh -huh. especially once he's boarded out those mystical disputes that can answer this dragon at instant speed. And uh, the Heartless Axe also not reliable in a deck that is playing Sajiri Shelter because even if you cast on turn five, the dragon gives you the mana immediately as soon as it's targeted uh, in order to cast your protection spell. So it's by no means a dead cert. We've got a couple of copies of Heart's Desire here, and that's followed up by a Love Struck Beast. Tale as old as time, as we see Wolf Willow Haven played as well. And now with four mana, Couple of options here for Seth. He's got the Valky, he's got the Wolf Willow Haven. He can cast both. Your end can be put into hand, but this extinction event, he's probably gonna save this to try to snag a little more value off the battlefield here. It, yeah, it's tough because Seth has the option of going for something like a Wolf Willow Haven into Valky uh, to get a better idea of what that last card in Javier's hand mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he knows about the Goldspan Dragon because of the duress. If he uses Extinction Event here, he would have to likely name even just because using Extinction Event to just get rid of the Love Struck Beast, not ideal. Uh, but leaving a Love Struck Beast in play means that any 1 1 from Javier immediately unlocks that 5-5 to swing across, and it, it's just rough both ends. Well, there is the Extinction Event, getting rid of the two one ones here, and that kind of does do something to neutralize the second copy of Love Struck Beast in Dominguez's hand. As we, as we go back to the Spaniard now, he's got a copy of Wilt, as well as that Goldspan Dragon, which could come down next turn. So we want to just play out another... another two... Uh, another five drop here. Is he going to cycle, maybe cycling away the Wilt here? Oh, I think you should kill the Oh, wolf wow. Here. No, he's just going after the Wolf Willow Haven. Will yeah. Of course, I forgot that was a, a play available to him. Well, tidy little uh, sequence there for Dominguez, an effective uh, stone rain. 
Yeah, a little bit of land destruction, really helpful here, just to make sure that if Javier is going to be stumbling, Seth is also going to be stumbling, especially mm -hmm, on mm -hmm. that mulligan. Uh, Shepherd of the Flock comes down here for pressure. It, this is not the type of matchup where you're going to be posturing for value-oriented plays with that Shepherd. Uh, most of the time, especially in this exact board state and had, you're going to need the pressure more than anything. Uh, so... I think Javier making great decisions, but it's really going to come down to if Javier hits this land drop here, Seth's in a lot of trouble. Uh, and Javier, Seth actually playing around that, making sure that's not even an option. Love this play. Fantastic. So there's Valky now, comes down. And in comes the Shepherd. Dragon came back the very next day. Another lovestruck beast here. So Javier not finding the uh, the fifth land that he needs to start casting dragons, finding a dragon instead. And Manfield here just trying to slow down the game, just trying to control the pace of play, get to a position where he can, he can stabilize and start resolving his own haymakers here. Yeah, Seth has a choice here. He could just put Yorian in hand uh, and play Omen of the Sea. He could go for Omen of the Sea, try to find an untapped land, and then mm -hmm. cast Binding the Old Gods. Uh, I don't think this board is necessarily pressuring him enough to just want to run out the binding here. I think I prefer the Omen Yorian line, but he has plenty of options just to try to keep himself alive here. I mean, you just play the Omen first, I think, and, and, and see what you're looking at. Oh my god. Or instead just do something neither of us said and turn it into a dragon, and this means the Omen can get cast anyway. Wow, Valky revealing his true colors here. Beneath that yeah. hood was an enormous 4-4 dragon. Who knew? But it's not going to be the only 4-4 dragon on the battlefield here, Marnie. No, I and I, to Seth's credit, I completely forgot about Valky's ability to turn into a copy of the creature that is exiling. And yeah, that dragon giving Seth two more mana means that now Seth has the option of untapping first and potentially just drawing an emergent ultimatum that he can cast. Ooh, wha bam look at this. An Elder Gargoyle, that. that's a 6-6 six, six with reach. Closing off the other, uh, preventing the other Goldspan dragon from getting in while he continues to bash with his Valky here that's turned into a dragon. But he used to scrub action here from old mate Valky as this Gold, uh, Goldspan dragon is generating a lot of advantage here for Seth, not just on the board, but also when it comes to mana. Those treasure tokens flowing thick and fast. Look at this. Yeah, Seth can now go Gargaroth and Binding in the same turn, get rid of Javier's dragon, try to stabilize the board with Greater Gargadon, and even if Javier was to draw one drop, thanks to Gargaroth's ability to gain three life on a block, Seth is still not dead on the board. So, Javier needs Gargaroth. a showdown. What are we going to see? Are we going to see the Binding first here? Binding the Old Gods, that's going to get rid of the opposing... Dragon doesn't trigger its ability, of course. It's not a spell, it's an ability. And now Elder Gangaroth. Javier needs a showdown! And there it is! Kabam! Look at that! Four cards off the top. Let's see what they are. We've got a Shepherd of the Flock. Kazul's Fury and a couple of lands here. Not the greatest showdown, but uh, still something. It's close. It, it, Seth is essentially on two life right now, but this Gargaroth is not letting any blockers through, and... This is all known information, so Seth knows that he's on two life right now, and he's not going to let that be the case for too long. Well, this is the thing, right? He actually has to attack with this uh, Gargoth if he wants to improve his life total. I mean, maybe he doesn't actually actually factually have to, but what we're looking at here is something along the lines of pump up a lovestruck beast with plus one, plus one counters, and then fling the beast straight at Seth's face. So he does need to, I mean, he'll be aware of that line that Dominguez can take this turn, and, and he'll have to find a way around it. Well, I think what Seth could do is attack with this Goldspan Dragon, and assuming Javier doesn't fling a Lovestruck Beast at it, uh, Seth actually has enough treasure and mana to put Yorian in his hand and just blink the Binding of binding the Old Gods, get rid of the Showdown of the Skulls before right. it can get to the point of putting counters on things. Right, yes, okay, that is an option here. Given the, the mana-producing ability of Goldspan Dragon, but looks like Seth's going to take a different route here. Plays an Omen of the Sea. Let's see what he finds. Let's try to draw a card. Finds Pelucranos and Heartless Act. Okay. So in comes the Elder Gargaroth here. 
maybe buffering the life total of Seth a little bit. We'll see. Does have to be very careful of that Kazul's fury. He does know about it, of course. It's face up, exile. Huh. So with Seth drawing the Pelucranos first rather than the Heartless Act, now it means that if he wants access to the Act this turn, uh, he would need to have uh, he would need to have drawn with the Gargaroth instead of gaining life and essentially saying that I want to play the Pelucranos this turn yeah. and represent another large attacker. So if Gargaroth trades it's not a love struck beast here. They could have been undone had the. Heartless that gone to hand, but instead it is Pelucranos. Seth on a healthier 10 life here. Doesn't have any mana to make Pelucranos fight. And Seth didn't kill the Shepherd of the Flock, instead dealing four damage to the, one damage to the other Lovestruck Beast. Uh, they didn't, there wasn't a triple block, I don't think. Oh, okay. There was only no, a double just, block. Sorry. It, double it, block. it looked like a triple block for a second, but of course not. Over here, searching up a mountain with his fabled passage. Oh, Javier Kazul's just fury! Wow, very aggressive. Look at this, sacrificing the uh, the love struck beast, going upstairs with it. So it's down to five. Edgewall innkeeper. Not a bad one with the shepherd in hand. Sure. Oh, there's another Kazul's fury. Another Kazul's fury hiding out in the in the lands. Look at that. We missed that one. Another Kazul's oh Fury God. as a land here. And now, out of nowhere, look at that, another another counter on the Shepherd of the Flock, and Kazul's Fury number two goes to Seth Manfield. Javier wow. Dominguez hiding a win condition amongst his lands. All right, we, we are a, a bit of a wrong side. We'll get that fixed for you momentarily, no worries. Riley... <sighs> A stunning win. A stunning win there for uh, Dominguez, who uh, had the win condition, the Kazul's Fury, just, just hiding away there. And the Shepherd yeah, of the Flock enabled it uh, to uh, to turn around. Because it caught me by surprise there, I have to say. It caught me by surprise, but that was all known information. So if Seth had spotted that, and he had opted to put the Heartless Act in his hand instead of the Pelucanos there was a way to potentially play around that by removing all the creatures on Javier's side of the board. Yes, yes, it would have been a little different had uh, Javier not been able to pull off that double fling. But even the e most eagle wow. might... I mean, Money, it's very unusual for you to miss something like that. You're usually on top of everything, so it shows just how sneaky that play was from Javier Dominguez that even, you know, you and Seth... I mean, me missing it? Huh? I mean, that's just... That's just another Sunday night in the Riley Knight household. But uh, that was that was some next-level magic there. That was some very, very cool stuff we just saw. Awesome stuff from Javier. And now we're seeing the Dranth Magistrate from the sideboard coming in. So certainly at least getting a little bit of help here post-board from Javier. And yeah, we're going to game three in a game that it really looked like it was just Seth's to win. Dranath Magistrate very lose, useful against uh, Urge Emergent Ultimatum as it prevents... You can cast the Ultimatum. You just can't cast anything else. So you can go and get three cards and then shuffle one back in and then leave the other two in exile because you can't cast them with a, with a Dranath Magistrate out. So it is a useful piece of technology. All right, there's a clip. It also off Fortel as well, right? So no Alrin's Epiphanies from Fortel either. Very true. But there's the clips. Let's remember this time, all right? There's a, there's a, there's a copy there's of Fortel. There's a custom play in the Shepherd in hand, noted. Yeah. You won't fool us again, Javier. <laughs> all right, the Shepherd played out as a 3 1 here. Does Seth have the third on tap land? He does. All right, so cultivate. Oh, that's, yeah, that's pretty good. Great start for Seth here. Mm -hmm. Playing with land box basics here, whereas Dominguez has gone to a little bit more trouble to find some of those John Avon unhinged. <laughs> Classic land box basics. I do like that Arena has, la like, just... Land basic station basics as well. I think it, it's very good that you can tell, you know, the PVs and the sets of the world have not put <laughs> any thought into it whatsoever. Here's Omen now. Have his hand not looking great, but he does have the double copy of Showdown, so he's going to be able to do some work with that. The the two Unleashed Furies are going to be good once a dragon comes down, but in the meantime, they're not doing a whole lot. 
Yeah, the big problem for Javier right now is he knows there's a card foretold. So that is guaranteed to be Auron's Epiphany. I guess not guaranteed. There are some copies of Behold the Multiverse in the deck, but realistically, Javier should have some expectation they're boarded out. Uh, so he knows about the blue source in Seth's hand. That's revealed from Cultivate. That means that Javier can expect Seth to play Epiphany next turn and get to seven mana. So this is Javier's last turn before Seth gets to a potential emergent ultimatum, and all he's going to do is play Showdown of the Skulls. Not great. Not great. Not ideal for him here. He plays the Showdown. Going to peel four. Oh, this game is looking really tough for Javier here, and I don't think I would be surprised to see Seth just kill off this Shepherd, go into two clean turns of Epiphany into Emergent Ultimatum. Keeping the board nice and clear after this showdown. It's not Behold, Javier. I have bad news. And now Alrun's Epiphany into Emergent Ultimatum. Triple green, double blue, double black, easily achieved. And let's get those three cards. The classic package is, of course, uh, Vorinclex, Tybalt, and the Alrun's Epiphany. But let's see if uh, Seth wants to take a different approach here. Yeah, that package sounds pretty good to me. I think you could also go with Cure Best the Sea God, Vorinclex, mm -hmm. Alrun's Epiphany. Uh, might actually be more pressured, pressure than Tybalt here. Yeah, it's more pressure, less value, certainly. You don't get to the draw two, but Cure Best the Sea God is also pretty hot, hot, hot here. Yeah, just end the and game, right? And again, when playing this deck, it's so important to make sure your Voronclex resolves first. So you click on that last. Always click on your Voronclex last, so it's the card that resolves first. You see Javier mousing over his cards down there, just a little in pain. It, it, it's turn four for him. He's cast Shodan of the Skulls with no other permanence in play. Seth is on seven mana resolving an emergent ultimatum. This is... They are not the same, you know? No, one of these players is slightly ahead of here. Yeah. Oh, Elder Gargaroth. Okay. So Voron collects Elder Gargaroth and Ulrin's Epiphany. The picks here. Hey, no, I, I think not. Cure of the Sea God is Gargaroth with more stats and hex proof here. Yeah, yeah, Seth eventually decides that's the way to go, and it, you never give him the time walk here. You, just you never give him the time walk. Nope. So, uh, Curibus, the Sea God, and Voron Clicks. You can see there the sequencing. Voron Click clicked last. Voron Clicks clicked last. And so it's Clexi's Midnight Runner coming along with the 8-8. Eight, eight. And, oh, that showdown of the skulls. That's tapped. That's not getting untapped next turn. It's Ooh, not getting waiting. untapped or getting a counter, Riley. Voron Clicks. Of course, cutting the counters from Javier in half as well. Mm -hmm. And that's just game over. So, back to Javier, who really doesn't have much to do here. Uh, I mean, can play the second showdown and have an extra enchantment on the battlefield, I guess. Draws a card from the Bone Crusher Giant, Edgewall Innkeeper combo, plays another card out of the showdown zone, but. Yeah, Steal the Bone Crusher, Heartless Act, the Edgewall Innkeeper. And the game, 16 and damage. attack for 16, yeah, just like that. And this was really what I've come to expect from the Sultai list. It is just so powerful. It's so, so uh, effective at, at in ending a game swiftly and decisively. And, I mean, look, it's, it's possible to race it. It's possible dis to disrupt it. But at the end of the day, if Sultai does its thing, you just, I mean, you can't stand in its way, man. Emergent Ultimatum is so powerful with these new, uh, new cultists.